Hallelujah. Lord to God. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I greet everyone the peace of Lord Jesus. In reverence to the Word of God, I would like to invite those who can to stand up at this moment. Book of Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1. Song of Solomon, chapter 3. Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, verse 4. The word of the Lord says the following. By night, on my bed, I sought the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. I will rise now, I said, and go about the city. In the streets and in the squares, I will seek the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. The watchmen who go about the city found me. I said, have you seen the one I love? Scarcely I had passed by them when I found the one I love. I held him. I held him and I would not let him go until I had brought him to the house of my mother and into the chamber of her who conceived me. Our God, we glorify you for your word. <laughs> it's okay. Everyone can be seated. So the word that we just read it talks about a prophetic time that the church is living and it's going to live it's the the time of night of the night time and the night time it refers to darkness and sin and it's a time of uncertainty and and difficulties it's a time of defining it's a definition period but this time it also talks about the sun that is soon to rise and the bible talks about this time um when a woman the bride and it's the moment that the bride finds herself in the situation she finds herself in she finds herself in the time of night and during this time that the bride finds herself in which is the bride she finds herself in this darkness and this is a time where she should be alert and attentive and aware and when we look at Israel there they are the, the prophetic time frame for for God and it talks about the bridegroom the bride the husband the wife and there's a parable that Jesus used to talk about, and he used to talk about the ten virgins. And they were all at a wedding where all of them had their their garments and their lamps. And they were all lit at that time. And it talks about a time in where um, at a sudden time, there, all of them started to, to take a rest and fall asleep. But it wasn't time yet to rest. Because the moment that they were living there is they were waiting for their bridegroom. They were waiting for their husband. And the book of Songs of Solomon, it talks just exactly about this. It talks about a, a period of time in where the husband and the wife talks about his beloved. The wife is loved by the husband, by the bridegroom. And the wife talks about that um, during this darkness, during this time at night, she goes out to look for the, 
the one that her heart loves. And she starts to look for him, and then she notices something. It's that her husband wasn't there. She couldn't find him. If he was present, then she wouldn't have to look for him, right? And this is very important because she, then she analyzed herself in that situation, in that moment, in her home, in her room, in her bed. She started to notice that the one that her soul loves wasn't there. He was absent. And a lot of times man is and mankind is unaware of this. They doesn't they don't realize this. They think that everything's okay. It's nighttime. And now what am I gonna do? It's nighttime, I'm gonna lay down and I'm gonna sleep and I'm gonna rest. When I lay down there's a verse in the Bible that says, When I lay down, I'm gonna quickly fall asleep because God is with me. So when God is with me, when or God is with you, everything's okay. You can s lay down and rest. But when we notice that God is not with us, then it's time to react. And it would be good if that wasn't necessary, right? It would be good if if we didn't even allow ourselves to not have God in our lives or not have the bridegroom. But in Brazil, we have this um, custom to close the door after after we are robbed. We lock the door after we already lose. So we get robbed and then we lock the door. And when do we lose? It's when we don't give value to something. That's when we lose something. And we have to give value so that we don't lose. And the word says that at night I sought in my bed the one that my soul loves. She didn't seek it just any random person. No, she was seeking someone that was important to her. They they played a big part in her life. Some someone that she loved and someone that loved her heard the love of her life and there's a song that says I have found the greatest love and so she has found this greatest love the love that cures all ailments and all infirmities just like the song says but at a determined period of time this love went away from her life and was absent from her life and when this happens, when a great love of ours leaves our lives, we what do we feel? We feel empty without them. And a, a lot of the times, people are feeling this emptiness. There's a song that says, if in yourself there is an emptiness, And when we get the, the lamp, I have a little lamp with oil, it is full, right? We see that the lamp is made of clay. But in the middle of the lamp, it has to be filled with something. There's a little space. And if it is not filled by this, um, by something, then it doesn't work. And when it is filled, in the past, they filled it with oil. And this lamp had a wick 
And when this lamp was full of the oil, the wick wouldn't burn because of the oil. But when the lamp was empty, the wick would burn. And so our souls burn when we don't have the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And in this moment, this woman was living this. She was living um, a period of darkness, of nighttime. She was looking for the one that her soul longed for. And when she realized that the love of her life wasn't there, she started to look for him. And she looked for him. Oh, this is a good attitude. It's a good thing. She was looking for him. I mean, he's not here. I'm going to go look for him. Right, but I'm going to look for him in my bed. It's easier. Right, I don't even have to get up. Just start, you know, feeling around, see if he's here. Right, but he was a little farther than that. And a lot of times we do this. We realize the absence of Jesus in our lives, the absence of the Holy Spirit, we feel that we miss them, but we want to start looking for him in our way and in our, using our methods. We want to find him in our comfort, in our comfort zone, in our bed. And then she said whose bed it was, it was her bed. Or in my comfort zone, in my reasoning, my human reasoning, in my logic, in my way of finding him. Because in my human logic, maybe I'll find him. And today, this moment, this prophetic moment that we are living, a lot of people are thinking this way. That I'm going to serve God my way. I'm going to do it in the way I think is right. In the way that I understand that it should be in my comfort zone, right? They put their feet up and then they're gonna click the remote and then I'm gonna find, that's how I'm gonna find God. And so she was finding God in her area of comfort, in her bed. And the Bible says that, what did she do? She didn't find him. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit is not going to be found in your comfort zone. And with when she noticed this, she started to take action. And then she said, okay, now I'm going to get up. I, I tried to found him, find him here, couldn't find him in my bed. I was laying down, looked around, couldn't find him, so now I'm going to get up. Okay, that's better, better than before. That's something more. She p took a position, and it's good that man puts, takes a position. He realizes, you know, this way that I'm trying to seek God isn't working, so I'm going to try to find another way. And this is good. This is healthy. And so they take an action. They take a position. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, stand up, and then I will speak to you. And so she stood up. She positioned herself. And why did she do this? Because she loved, she loved the one who loved her. She did it because of love. And she did it because she felt his absence. And the Bible says that then she started to go out looking for him. And the Bible says that I got up and I started to go about the city. There's um, a song, there's a secular song in Brazil. When I was younger, it was back then in the day, and it said that at night I went about the city, I tried to look for you, and I couldn't find you. I think two of you might know it here. But and then the music it kept kept going and then it says, I went back home 
tired, and without hope of living. Right? This is very interesting. Even the worldly people know that they were trying to look for their love. They went about the city, couldn't find him, went back home, sad, discouraged, and just upset with life. But this woman, even though she went to the city to find her love, she didn't come back home discouraged or empty-handed. You do know why? Because she went and she saw it and she kept looking until she found him. And if you try to find, if you seek, you take one round and you can't find it and then you let it go, this is what's going to happen to you. You're going to come back today, tonight from this service. You're going to go back home and you're going to be discouraged with life and with your soul upset. But the Bible says the following. When you seek, you will find. And so she started looking about the city. She, she did her rounds around the city. <coughs> and in the city, she started going through the streets, into the roads. And sometimes man wants to find God in the city, in the organization, in p politics, in the social, um, in the socialism, but that's not where they're going to find God in society. So and then she started going out into the streets, and the street, the road. I mean, if you go out from here and you see the roads, they take you all over the place. To north, south, what, east, west. You can go to the beach. You can go to the Everglades. You can go to Orlando. You can go to Miami. Right? So the roads, it takes you to many different places. Jesus, he is not a road. He is the way. You're not going to find Jesus in the, in the street. And so, and then the Bible says she went to the to the squares, and then there was, you know, some movement there. I'm gonna see if he's over there in that, in the middle of that, of that um, meeting of people, and you know, the socializing. It's good, everything's fine. But Jesus is not in the squares. And so after she went and tried to find him in the streets, in the squares, in the common places, sometimes people keep trying to find Jesus from street to street, from road to road, to common place to common place, square to square, from city to city, to address to address, movement to movement. But that's not where they're going to find Jesus. Because Jesus, he's not in the common places or the squares. He's not in the roads or the, the movements. I tried to find him. I sought him, but I did not find him. That's what the word said. So why did she, when she tried to find him, why couldn't she find him? Help me out here. Because she was looking at the wrong places. Looking at the wrong places. When Jesus died and resurrected, the ladies, our, our woman, went to his tomb. They went to his tomb to find Jesus. What was the answer that they got? Jesus wasn't in the tomb. He had resurrected. And Jesus said to them, why are you seeking amongst the dead people, the one who lives. And so when this lady, when the bride, 
was looking for Jesus in the streets and the common places she couldn't find him and then she just kept looking for him and then and at one of the instances one of the guards caught up to her the, and the guards are responsible for guarding the city and so and then she asks these guards a few questions after she encountered them the guardians of faith if you will the guardians of religion and denominations and she tried to find with these guards an answer of where her beloved was and the Bible says that they did they do not have an answer for her so what does this mean the religion the theology the philosophy doesn't have the answer for you do you know why because they are doing the same thing they're trying to find they're just going around and around and the people of Israel they also did this they started they walked for 40 years until they found the promised land and so here the the bride the wife the the she started asking the guards if they found the one that loves her soul that her soul loves and that was their that was their responsibility to give her some information to give her help but they the bible says that they did not have the answer for her and so she separated from them she went away from them and then that's when she found the one who her soul loves but what does this mean to get away to apart from someone it means you're getting farther away from them you separate from them and do you know what it means to be holy sanctified it means to be separated so when she separates when she gets far from all of this movement from all of the city the guards and the people when she sanctified herself that's when she found her beloved and there is a verse in the bible that says It says that without sanctification, no one will see God. So when she separates, she separates, she sanctifies, and she sees her beloved. She sees God. She has an encounter with God. And then she finds him right away. And why does she do this? Because, because she loved him, her beloved. And there's a verse that I'm going to leave here with the brethren. It says, Seek the Lord while he is near. Seek the Lord while he can be found. And in this verse, it has two alerts. It has two announcements. It says, Seek and find. Or seek while. Because f for a little bit more time, you can still seek God but there's still time now and in the little time that she had she was looking for the one that her soul was yearning and the one that she loves and there's another verse that says seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart and this is what this woman did. She was seeking him while she could still find him. She sought him with all her heart. She sanctified and separated herself that she could be with him once more. And so when she separated herself from the guards, she found the one that her soul loves. But now that she found him, and you, my brother, my sister, that is here tonight, you that tonight has found has had an encounter you that today is having an encounter with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he is the one that this 
woman is talking about in this verse, that is the one, that is her beloved. It is Jesus. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to save you. He has a new earth, a new, uh, new heaven, an eternity to give you. And he loved the world so much that he died on the cross for, our, for you and mine and all of our sins. He already proved his love for us. And he loves us so much. And we know that our souls love him. Sometimes our flesh doesn't, but our souls do. And that's why the, the servants of the path said that our soul thirsts for the living God. And so when she separated herself from the guards, she found the one that is her beloved. She has found her great love. And today, you are having an encounter with this great love. This love that I'm talking about that cures your, your pain. It gives you peace. It gives you comfort. It gives you refuge. It's a love that has already proved how much he loves you. It's proven. And you've already felt this presence It's a love that's going to bring you to eternity and to heaven. But so now that you are with him, now that you have had an encounter, what are you going to do, my brother, my sister? Peter, si um, Peter Simon, he went into the synagogue on Sabbath. And on that day, Jesus was there. And when the, the service was over, in that synagogue Peter he had a different attitude that all the other people had what did he do do you know Peter he took Jesus to his house and today you have had this encounter with this great love do not leave here without him take Jesus to your house Because the Bible says that believe in Jesus and you and your home and your whole house will be saved. And so and then his this woman, the the bride, she did this. She looked for him until she found him and then she brought him home and she introduced him to her whole entire home and, and house and family. And so if you have found this love, do not separate from it. Do not grow apart from it. Stay close to it. Because this is their desire. This is his desire. His desire is that you take this attitude. And his desire is that you open your heart for him. And that you let him reside in your life. In your home. In your family. And she put him in the most special place in her house, which is in her bed, which is in your heart. Because the desire of the Lord is to reside in your home and in your heart. And she did this. And then she was rewarded by him. As soon as she took Jesus into her life, into her home, Jesus started to conduct her to her home which is eternity, our celestial home, because wherever he will be, we will be with him. Amen. So don't leave here without Jesus. Take him with you. Take him with you in your heart, into your family, into your home. Amen.
the church can now be standing. We're going to have a word of glorification to our God. Lord God, in this moment, we exalt you because you are our perfect love. You are this love that the world does not know. You are our beloved. You are the love of our, our lives. And one day you chose us and we praise you because you are near the ones who seek you. And we praise you because you have not left us without answers. We praise you because you are our greatest love. And you not only cured our physical lives, you cured also our souls. And you are ready to take us to eternity. And we thank you for this great love, for this day of joy. We praise you, God, for this beautiful day in Jesus' name. Amen. And today... Um, Jesus showed that there was a man who has children that he raised in God's presence. and But, you know, today they know, are no longer in the presence of the Lord. However, today God is giving him the conditions to reevaluate his life, come back to God, and as well as his children will follow suit right after him. Um, God showed in another vision as well that there was a man who was walking around in the desert. He had no sense of direction. He was just walking around aimlessly. But today, God showed to this man that he had a place determined for him in a beautiful city. And then God showed him that in this city, there was a space that was constructed, being constructed especially for him. And this beautiful city is eternity, guys. It's heaven. And Jesus says that he is going to heaven to prepare homes for us. There is no place for us in this world. But there is a place for you in heaven, in eternity. Because the sacrifice of Jesus was for this. It was to take you to this new to this new earth and to this new heaven. Lord God, we want to glorify you, Lord. We are so thankful for this great love, Lord, for your grace, your mercy that has reached us. And we pray and ask God that no one can leave this place without the presence of your Holy Spirit in their hearts. Give us your blessing. Give us a blessed week, Lord, of experiences with you, deliverances, victories. We pray, Lord, already thankful for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. And in your name we say that the grace of God, our loving eternal Father, and the eternal consolations of the Holy Spirit can be over us now and forever. Amen. Everyone can now be seated. There's just a, a brief announcements before we start our period of assistance. We want to remind the church of the seminar. It's going to be on January 13th and 14th. God back in the day gave Moses in a, um, a direction that everyone, the daughters, the, the sons, the women, the men, the animals would leave Egypt. But Pharaoh didn't want to let the people leave Egypt. He stopped it multiple times. And one day Moses went before Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. Moses said that to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh wanted to leave a little bit behind. And Moses said to Pharaoh, not even one nail will be left behind. And my brother and my sister were going to this seminar and not even one nail is going to be left behind. All of us are a part of the body, which is our, uh, the body, the church of Jesus Christ. And there's a, a, a fee to go to the seminar, but if you can't pay for the fee, there's a discount. But if you don't have money for even the discount, you don't have to pay anything. Talk to us. Tell us your situation. There's a bus that is willing to take you to the seminar because um, it's going to be near Orlando. But what's important is that no one is left behind. If you haven't yet signed up and did do your registration, 
for the seminar. Find one of us. We can help you. Pharaoh is going to try to get you to not go and to stay behind. But God is greater than Pharaoh. Pharaoh, he might rule the world, but our God rules heavens and earth. He's the king of kings. All of us will participate in this blessing. We're going to be united there in the praise and the, for the glory of our God. So if you need any help in registering for the seminar, if you don't know how, this is what we are here for. We're going to help you and talk to us if you have a particular situation, and we will help you. And on the 31st of December, we're going to have a end-of-the-year vigil service. It's going to be at 10.30. It's going to be on the 31st of December. We're going to spend the New Year's here in God's presence, which is the best place for you to be, at the feet of the Lord. So after um, we assist all of our visitors, we're going to start. We're going to have a brief meeting to talk about this vigil that we're going to have on the 31st. If you require any assistance, any prayer, please do not hesitate to um, raise your hand and ask for a prayer. We are here. If you have any questions, just raise your hand or ask someone next to you to raise their hand for you, and we will pray for you and we will help you with whatever you need. We have services on Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, 7.30. On Tuesday, Thursdays at 8. Tuesday, we also have through Zoom our Bible study, and we wish you all.